Good day everyone, I am Maria Isabel Navarosa and I am here to discuss about the general provisions of contracts, Articles 1308 to 1312. Article 1308 the contracts must bind both contracting parties, its validity or compliance cannot be left to the will of one of them. Article 1308 talks about the principle of mutuality of contract. It was said there that both contracting parties are bound, meaning the principle is about the equality of the parties. That's why it is principle of mutuality. Also, it is not right if the decision or extinguishment of a contract is only dependent to the sole will of one party. Again, all decisions should be mutual or equal to every parties of the said contract. Example, in a loan contract, hindi pwedeng si creditor has the unilateral right to adjust the interest anytime he want, base sa kanyang sole discretion. If that's the case, it is possible na itataas niya ng itataas yung interest. That's why there should be an agreement from both parties. Example number 2. Jack agreed to sell his car to Jill and Jill agreed to pay 1.5 million. So the contract is binding because mutuality is present from both parties. If there is a stipulation that Jack alone will determine the price of the car which Jill has no choice, that violates the mutuality of contract. There should be a consent from both parties. Kahit na si Jack ang magdetermine ng price, kailangan din ng consent ni Jill. Also, the mere fact that a party to a contract has made a bad bargain, it may not be a ground for setting aside the said agreement. Kahit na nalaman mong unfair yung pinasok mong contract, to the point na lugi ka talaga, hindi pwedeng baliwalain mo na lang yun. If in the first place, you agreed and there's a consent from you. So, the next article is Article 1309. The determination of the performance may be left to a third person, whose decision shall not be binding until it has been made, to know, made known to both contracting parties. Take note, the decision of the third person shall bind the parties only after it has been made known to both of them. So, Article 1308 states that there should be a mutuality among all parties. Here in the Article 1309, the determination of the performance may be left to the third person. It is an exception to the principle of the mutuality of contracts. So, example, Jack sold his parcel of land to Jill. It was agreed that Jess, a real estate appraiser, would be the one to determine the reasonable price of the land. Jess then fixed the price after considering all the circumstances and factors affecting the value of the land. So, that's what the Article 1309 says about the third person. However, Take note that the decision of the third, per third person shall bind the parties only after it has been made known to both of them. So, after niyang ipaalam sa parties. But this rule is not absolute and there's an exception. The exception is in the Article 1310. So, the determination shall not be obligatory if it is evidently inequitable. In such case, the courts shall decide what is equitable under the circumstances. So, the decision of the third person is not binding if it's evidently inequitable or let's say unjust. If that's the case, the court will be the one to decide according to Article 1310. So, the next article is Article 1311. Contracts take effect only between the parties, their assigns and heirs, except in case where the rights and obligations arising from the contract are not transmissible by their nature or by stipulation or by provision of law. 
the heir is not liable beyond the value of the property he received from the decedent. If a contract should contain some stipulation in favor of a third person, he may demand its fulfillment provided he communicated his acceptance to the obligor before its revocation. A mere incidental benefit or interest of a person is not sufficient. The contracting parties must have clearly and deliberately conferred a favor upon a third person. So, Article 1311 is another principle or characteristics of a contract, which is relativity of a contract, meaning the effectiveness of the contract is between the parties, their assigns and heirs. Example If si Jack may utang siyang 1.5 million kay Jill, so they are both parties and the contract will take effect between them. But if later on, namatay si Jill, yung bayad ni Jack ay bibigay niya sa mga heirs ni Jill. Same goes if si Jack naman yung namatay, the heirs of Jack will pay Jill 1.5 billion because as what the article 1311 says the contract is effective on them too now provided if may mga natitirang properties si Jack na pwedeng ipambayad kay Jill yun yung ibibigay ng mga heirs si Jack also in the article 1311 on the last paragraph says that the heirs is not liable beyond the value of the property he received from the decedent. That is what I'm saying that provided may ari-ari ara na iwan si Jack. Yun yung pwede nila ipambayad kay Jill. And if sobra naman yung naiwang ari-arian, pwede ipambayad muna nila. And then yung sobra, tsaka nila hati-hatiin yung mana nila kay Jack. But if the value of the property is not enough to pay Jill worth 1.5 million, then the heirs won't have to shell out, meaning the heir is not liable beyond the value of the property. Same goes with their assigns or let's say third person, and that's what the principle of relativity means. Now, let's go to the exceptions that is stated on the Article 1311. Again, contracts takes effect between parties, their assigns, and heirs. But the exceptions here is when the rights and obligations arising from, from contracts are not transmissible by, by their nature, by stipulation, and by provision of law. For example, and by nature. If, uh, if Jack has an obligation to paint for Jill, then later on namatay si Jack, the said obligation is not transmissible. Since hindi naman pwedeng yung heir si Jack ang magpaint for Jill. Another one is by stipulation. If nasa usapan talaga ni Jack and Jill na it is not transmissible to their heirs and assigns and that, and that the contract is for them only. And the last exception is by provision of law. Example and partnership. In partnership, kapag napatay ang isang partner, automatic ma-extinguish ma yung partnership. Hindi ito namamana like if namatay si Jack, yung partner mo na lang is yung anak niya. Hindi siya ganun. Again, contracts take effect between parties, their assigns, and heirs. But here, a third person is one who has not taken part in a contract and is therefore a stranger to the contract. In cases when strangers... The general rule is the third person has a no rights and obligations under a contract to which he is a stranger, meaning he doesn't have the rights to demand for the enforcement of a contract and for annulment too. Example, Jill sold the car to Jack with an agreement to not sold it to others until full payment, but Jack later on sell, sold it to Jess even if the payment is not yet fully paid, and that is a violation of the agreement. Question. Can Jill cancel the contract of Jack and Jess? The answer is no. Why? Because Jill is considered as a third person to the contract of Jack and Jess. Same goes with that contract of Jack and Jill. Jess is considered as a stranger. 
And the general rule is that a third person has no rights and obligations under a contract to which he is a stranger. Now, what is the remedy of jail? Jill can now claim damages against Jack for breach of contract since what he did is a violation of the said agreement. And that's what the principle of relativity means. Moreover, there are exceptions that is stated on the second para paragraph of the Article 1311. If a contract should contain some stipulation in favor of a third person, he may demand its fulfillment provided he communicated his acceptance to the obligor before its revocation. A mere incidental benefit or interest of a person is not sufficient. The contracting parties must have clearly and deliberately conferred a favor upon a third person. So, the second paragraph talks about stipulation for a truwee. So, what is a stipulation for a truwee? Stipulation for a truwee is a stipulation in a contract clearly and deliberately conferring a favor upon a third person who has a right to demand its fulfillment provided he communicates his accept acceptance to the obliger before its revocation by the obligee or the original parties. So there are classes of stipulation for a truwee and they are, the first one is those where the stipulation is tended for the sole benefits of benefit of such person. And the second one is those where an obligation is due from the promise to the third person, which the former seeks to discharge by means of such stipulation, as for instance, where a transfer of property is coupled with the purchaser's promise to pay a debt owing from the seller to a third person. So, in the first classes, the third party is said to be a donny beneficiary because he receives the benefits. And in the second classes, the third person is called creditor beneficiary because he receives the benefit of a contract as a repayment of a debt owed by one of the parties to a contract. Also, there are requisites of stipulation for a truly. First, there must be a stipulation in favor for a third person. Second, the third person must have communicated his acceptance to the obliger before its revocation by the obligee or the original parties. Dapat i-communicate niya yung acceptance. Third, the stipulation in favor of the third person should be a part and not the whole of the contract or the contract itself. Part lang dapat ng contract mismo, hindi siya yung whole of the contract or contract itself. The fourth one, the favorable stipulation should not, should not be conditioned or compensated by any kind of obligation, whatever. The parties must have clearly and deliberately conferred a favor to the third person, hindi dapat incidental lang. The last Neither of the contracting parties bears the legal representation or authorization of the third party for otherwise the rules or on agency will apply. So to better understand, here's an example. So Jack has a debt amounting to 20000 to Jill and has an interest of 10% and that is payable until 30th of June. It is said in the contract that the 10% interest will be given to Jess, a third person to the contract. The parties are Jack and Jill only, but there is a stipulation in favor of Jess. In this case, Jess must communicate her acceptance, otherwise she will not be entitled to the benefit of the contract. So that's stipulation for a true way. Next article is Article 1312. In contracts creating real rights, third persons who come into possession of the object of the contract are bound thereby, subject to the provisions of the mortgage law and the land registration laws. So, it is also an exception to the principle of relativity of contracts. Moreover, it says here that the third third person is bound in creating real rights. For example,
Jack mortgaged his parcel of land in favor of Jill as a security for his debt. Take note that the mortgage is duly registered to the Registry of Property. Later on, Jack sold the land to Jess. In this case, Jess bought the lines subject to the mortgage constituted thereon. In other words, kahit pa hindi party si Jill nung contract of sale ni Jack and Jess, dahil sa contract of mortgage, which is actually a real rights because it is registered to the registry of property, then si Jess will be bound to the contract of Jack and Jill. Nire-respeto ni Jess yung right ni Jill kahit hindi siya party ng contract nila ni Jack. So, that's what the article 1312 says. And that would be all. Thank you.